everybody. There's no place I'd rather be on the last Wednesday of the month than Four Peaks, which is where we are today with the PHNX Caddies podcast brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a five star review. I'm Leah Merrill here with Steve Peters and Craig Morgan, as always. And in just a few minutes, we'll be joined by ASU hockey head coach Greg Powers. But before he gets here, cheers. And cheers. It, and cheers. it's technically noon, so yeah. we're not drinking we in the drink. morning. We so I feel terrible. Yeah. We do this at 11. No, I don't care. We're all drinking uh, Wow, by the wow. way. Yeah. Thank you, Great. Four Peaks, for hosting us. $3 Great wow daytime. today, buddy. Great daytime beer with the $3 wow is when you come to Four Peaks today and let yep. them know you're with PHNX. Also, $3 kilt lifters as well. So come on down. We're the second show today. We're here all day, all the way through 5 o'clock. So head on down. Before we bring on Coach Powers, just a couple Coyotes notes because they did play a preseason game last night. They lost 5-4 to four in overtime against the Dallas Stars in Tulsa. 4-3. We couldn't watch the game, so we don't have analysis other than what the score sheet tells us. <laughs> was it 4-3? It was 4-3. Sorry. Was in overtime. 4-3 in overtime. I knew it was a one-goal game because all of the preseason losses happened. But you know what? You look at this game, and a couple of things jump out to me. Well, first of all, special teams. And that's one of the hardest things to get going during a training camp because you're not getting enough practice time. You're not getting enough ice time for your power play or penalty kill. So for their power play to go two for three, I think that was big. You got Goss to spare with one, Bukestad with one, net front. Um, and I expect Bukestad to keep saying it, that he's going to be the breakout player. Maybe I'm wrong because I said that about Louis last year. So <sighs> They got we'll a shorty, too. Um, and they got a shorthand to go with, yep. and they they killed four out of five. The one they didn't kill was in overtime, and that was you know four and three. Yeah. So so those are some of the takeaways that I thought that was good. The special teams, and again, Bukestad getting a goal from getting to the front of the net. I think that's another a big thing that he's going to have to do to be a big part of this offense. He's going to have to get to the net front. He's going to have to be good around the front of the net, and that's what he was able to do last night, according to Twitter in the the five <laughs> seconds of the game that I was able to see. <laughs> Yeah, we'll give you a big breakdown here. The other one, Craig, was a player that you talked about was was Laurent Dauphin. And see how I did that? Beautiful. Wow. I know. That's oh, that was very Craig. I, I did throw the Craig S. The, the Laurent Dauphin. <laughs> and, Laurent Dauphin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that he sh- sh- showed up on the score sheet again. Yeah. And you've already mentioned him as a guy that that's, he's fighting for a spot. Yeah, and Bill Armstrong said this uh, when he came over to us uh, in Tucson. They were impressed with his first game. He's showing up again. Again, we haven't seen him, though. It's hard. It's hard to evaluate when we haven't seen him. But the guy's been around the league. He, he knows what it takes to play in this league. He's he obviously been up and down. But I think there's a role for him on this team. And you made a really good point. I'm going to let you make it again. Well, no, no, I think there's something interesting about Laurent Van. He's been here twice already. He knows the system. He knows the city. He's familiar with Tucson and yeah, Phoenix. But he's old enough to understand the league. He can sit out two or three games, and you can throw him into a lineup, and you can go, okay, I'm ready to play. I can jump in here. I'm not, he's not, he's past the development stage. Yep. So if you sit him out two, three, four games in a row, and he's got to play. The other thing about Laurent Fan is he can play up and down the lineup. He can play top six. He's skilled yep. enough. He can distribute the puck well enough. He skates well enough to play top six, but he's gritty enough and gets the pucks. He can play bottom six. So he can play in and out of the lineup, and he can play in the middle, and he can play on the wing. Unbelievable, versatile player. And I think that makes him an ideal candidate for a 13 forward. Yeah, and as you mentioned, you don't want to put a prospect in that situation sure. who needs development time. Yeah. So he's the perfect fit play games. in some ways. If yeah. you're going to be in the American League, you got to play games. You don't want to be a 13 forward being a guy that's trying to break in at 19, 20, 21. Right. Um, on the goaltending front, Gilly stopped 14 of 15. Prozatov stopped 17 of 20. Like we said already, the Coyotes are 0-2-1. Right. Lost every game by one goal, which is exactly what we want to see in the regular season. Losing by one Keeping it interesting. Um, the Coyotes have a day off on Thursday, but Craig, do you think we'll see some cuts tomorrow? Yeah, I think we're going to see some of the cuts now because <laughs> there's a good break between preseason game four tonight and the final three games. Andre Turigny has already said that he wants those games, those final three games, to be veteran heavy. Yeah. So you're going to see a lot of guys heading back to the clubs where they're going to play. Tucson's uh, training camp opens on October 3rd, early next week. So we could see a lot of cuts. The other thing that we're probably going to see from other teams around the league is we're going to start seeing some guys put on waivers. And we've been talking about this all season. Do the Coyotes have their backup goaltender in camp? I'm going to take a deeper dive into that with a story tomorrow on PHNX Sports. Look at some of the possible candidates to become the backup goalie for the Coyotes. Because you're right. This time of year is when guys, and, and I've been on the other side of it, when you're trying to sneak guys in through waivers and you go, okay, well, everybody in the league's cutting today and they're trying to slide guys through. There's going to be goalies going through waivers, and there's going to be experienced number three 
guys that have been borderline AHL guys that are going to be there. That's what I think. And I think that this might be a good opportunity for the, the Coyotes to pick somebody up for free. Um, we'll have to see. And, and the harder part for me is they're playing again tonight. And they're back on the road again tonight. And we're going to say this a lot. They're back on the road tonight. They're <laughs> on back on the, the road, road tonight. again. That should be the official song of the season. They played in Tulsa yesterday, and I am today. I don't care what anybody says, and I know there isn't much overlap on the lineup of players, but there's still staff, coaches, scouts, management. They're gonna get. T- they're gonna get tired on yeah. the road again. <laughs> so, and I just want to say, do you Lee see Nick? Sing? Nick super dumb. Yeah, I want to acknowledge some of these comments. So we yeah, got, yeah, it's. Hey, it's my buddy Petey. It's Nick from Tucson. We did meet meet Nick all kinds of people this weekend in Tucson. Um, Thomas said, I never comment much, but I love the content from you guys. Really enjoy the shows. Thank you so much, Thomas. We really appreciate that. We appreciate everybody who comments live with yeah. us and everyone yep. we've met. And even the ones who might not even live in Arizona we haven't met. Feels like we know you. And we're, we're two weeks away from postgame shows. Yep. I know. Nick got a Ooh. photo bomb in, by the way. Got the, the prime seat behind us oh, on well, camera. Oh, yeah. Postgame awesome. show yeah. on Sunday. I know. Two weeks from today, the Coyotes play their first game. Yep. Here we go. Is that two weeks from today? Two weeks from Oy. today. I hope you're ready. I'm um, well, go. you know what's a couple of days from now is Arizona State Hockey's yes. season so opener on we, the road. Wave them over? So I think we're going to wave this? You're not him doing that. over. ASU head coach oh, Greg Powers. Look at this entrance. He, we can't see it on he's camera coming, yet. He's we're coming. We're adjusting he's coming. the shot. We're going to get, get the... Oh, is it? Yeah, I just don't want him to spill his beer oh, yet yeah. before we get started. <laughs> no, right. Don't you spill your beer. A little bit of slack. <laughs> Greg promised me free beer, and it's already here. I know. We had it That's how we do ready it at and waiting for you at Four Peaks. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. There Look at that are. shot. Now we got the, there we the go. beer in the bag. Well, I think we should start with a toast. Cheers, Cheers Coach. Cheers, Absolutely. Coach Powers. Thank Starting you so much season. for joining yeah. us. Yeah, and by the way, congratulations on completing your final practice at Oceanside Ice Arena. Is that it? I just came from it. Wow. Yeah. Today, are you are you officially I'll, on the road? Here, let's toast to that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Wow. What a run. How are you feeling about that? Take your sip for yeah, a That so does good. deserve toast after being in that ring for that many years. It's uh, it, it's it's obviously bittersweet. You know, it's it's we owe so much to the place. But we uh, the coaches got on the ice last night at Mullet Arena for the first time. And, and it's just, you know, the, I mean, obviously the difference is you can't even put in the word. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, we're excited. We get to unload and we get back from this trip and uh, to mullet and we'll never play anywhere else. Wow. You say bittersweet, but mostly sweet, obviously. Yeah. But let's be honest here. <laughs> I know you're good friends with Adam Mims yeah. over at Oceanside, yeah. so we can joke about this, buddy. And I, yeah. I asked you this yesterday. When they take the wrecking ball to that place, do you want to join us? We're, we're probably going <laughs> to film it. <laughs> it you know, it, it, yes, I do. Um but I tell you, it, it's it's meant so much to hockey in, in this community. Mm-hmm. It's been the one staple, uh, really, as long as you can you can think back to when the game started here in the valley. So for it to go away is sad. But but you know, we put two very nice facilities and rinks in Tempe and lost one, so it's a good trade. Kidding aside, what is? I guess what did that building mean to the program? We've talked about this a lot. And what will the new building mean to the program when you finally move in? As you said, right after you come back from this road trip. Yeah, it's meant everything to us. I yeah. mean, we, we, you know, this is this is such a weird market where there's just no mid-level facility yeah. to play I to play Isaac. I mean, the Coyotes are going through it right now. You know, and, I mean, there's no place where you could really call a temporary home that's sufficient. And that's why we've had to play there. Um, I mean, dating back to when I got involved at the club club level, you know, as an assistant coach, we decided. We didn't want to play up in Scottsdale at the ice then. It was too far for the kids to drive. And so moving back to a you know subpar facility, not even in the same ballpark as the ice then, was the right decision for the, the kids. And they opened it up the, the doors with open arms and gave us a locker room. And we just kind of expanded and built on the place and made, you know, put lipstick on a pig numerous <laughs> times and, yeah. um, and, uh, and made the most of it. You know, our record there, I think, was like 59, 16. It was insane, and by the way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and NCAA. And, and so we, we won games, and, and that's what we're going to remember, that we were a really tough team to play at Oceanside. But the new building, wow. What is this yeah. going to mean for the program, right? Well, again, I think the most exciting thing about the new building is that our, our players have never had 5,000 people behind. Never. We've had 800 behind us, and that's it. We've, we've always played against five to 8,000 people when we go on the road, just like we will this Saturday and, and again, the, the following weekend. And, and so we get to come back to this incredible environment uh, that's going to be sold out on October 14th, um, loud, 
crazy student section, a band, everything that college wow. hockey embodies. Oh, yes. it's going to be see, so fun. You know, I was wondering about the band because yeah. we've been through there a few times, yeah. but to see a college band, like that's it's college gonna hockey. It's going to feel like college. Yeah. 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 That's it's, a college it's, hockey it's environment. It's a college hockey game with a 70-piece band and, wow. and <laughs> pumping the music and, and making yeah, the environment just that much better. So what we get to come back to is, is going to be really exciting and uh, we we want to go up and make the most of these four games, so we just generate even more hype and more more excitement for that that opener on October fourteenth. What was the reaction of the team when you took them uh, to Mullet Arena and saw that pitchfork at center ice there? Oh, uh, I think they were so excited, you know, and and, and we're thrilled that, that we just get to play a couple games with with our logo. I think it means a lot to our donors and the people that have supported our program that made the building happen. And and then you know after the Colorado College game, you're going to see two at center ice and. It'll be a, a celebration of, of hockey in, in the state of Arizona. Two teams playing under one roof at an unbelievable facility. And um, I don't think people understand how great of a venue this is going to be to watch the Coyotes at. Um, you know, you see you see a lot of people poking fun at the, the size of the venue. And I, I, you're not going to even see a player walk into this place going, oh, this is this is slumming it. it, it I mean, yeah. it's, it's so nice, you know, and it just has a great feel. So, you know, just watching us, watching the Coyotes in this place is going to be a lot of fun for hockey fans. Yeah, there's so much that I love about this building. What you did in the dressing room, by the way, I need to bring that up again because it's one of my greatest sources of annoyance around the NHL. Greg Powers put this, the pitchfork, the, the sun of a logo on the ceiling yeah. <laughs> because most NHL teams put it in the middle of the rug and then they get pissed off at you when yep. you step on it because why? I don't know. Been it's, there. Yep. it's childish. Yep. So. Greg solved the problem. He just put it on the up. ceiling. Everybody can see it. Yeah. You don't have to worry about messing with it. All right, let's talk some hockey. It went in yesterday, by the way. Did it? Did it really? Oh, yeah. Does it look good? With the so lights. We talked about the lights. Space. The lights. I'm a big believer in outside light. I think it does something to your body and your mind, yep. and that's the only locker room I can, I've I ever been in. I can't think of any locker room with windows. windows. Right, yeah. natural light. I've never seen that yeah. in a hockey locker room, ever. Yeah. And the weight room. Yeah, so, it's unreal. Is so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. All right, we should talk some hockey, I guess, while we get you liquored up here. Yeah. Pre, the, the national preseason poll was just released. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the poll in a moment. But one of the things that I noticed is that you play every one of the teams in the top five. Yeah. And, and eight of the teams in the top 20. Greg, are you nuts? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think people think that I am. But it's just how it's if you're an independent um, and you have confidence in, in what you've built, which we do, um, you have to you have to play the best. It, it, if you get wins, especially you go on the road and you play a Minnesota Duluth and a Bemidji to open the season, and you get some wins up there, it's the gift that keeps on giving. We have to we have to play to the pairwise ranking, the the coaches poll, the media poll. That means absolutely nothing in college hockey. We don't care about it. We don't look at it. Um, you know the preseason polls that you see, it, it's literally a cut and paste job from coaches from last season. You know yeah. teams change and the portal so. You know, it, they mean nothing. But the pairwise ranking, if you can go on the road and play really good teams and get wins, um, it rewards you all season. You know, so, yeah, you know, and, and we, we have confidence in our team that, that we can beat anybody that we play. Let's and, follow up on that just a little bit because I don't, I don't know that everybody's completely familiar with how pairwise works, and I know you are. You can, yeah. you can tell me what's coming. You're, you predict the future when I talk to you sometimes about pairwise. <laughs> so can you maybe just give a – a uh, quick refresher for people on how that all works. Yeah, so in college hockey, the, the top 16 teams in the pairwise make the NCAA tournament, and it's a it's a computer ranking. So it's a it's like an RPI uh, for college basketball fans and, and and of the like. It's it's an RPI. It's a weighted computer ranking. It rewards you for winning on the road. It rewards you for playing a tough schedule. Um, and and really with our schedule, we have 39 games this year. You know, the magic number for us is probably 22. So if we get 22 to 23 wins, we're going to mm. we're gonna get in. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I can pick the pairwise apart, how it works and, and what you need to do from week to week and, and how it projects. And you have to be that way as an independent because as an independent, it's your only way in. You have to get in as an at-large. You, you can't get an auto bid from winning a conference tournament. So for us, we have to be in the top 12 to feel safe at the at the end of the year. Because conference tournaments can go any way, you, you, you know, and an a, a under-ranked team could win their conference tournament, go on a run, and then knock 13, 14, 15, 16 teams out. So uh, for us, that magic number is 12 or higher. And you talk about these big teams, and you're not fooling around right off the bat. So you're going into Duluth and playing the University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. 
top 10 team, I think currently ranked five. They're a good program. Mm-hmm. They're, they're a good hockey team. I have a question from a coaching perspective. When you're playing a team, they haven't played a game yet, you haven't played a game yet, how do you prepare your team pre-scout-wise and preparation-wise for a team that hasn't hit the ice yet? Yeah, I mean, Duluth's Duluth, so we're lucky. Scott Sandlin's probably, in my opinion, the best coach in college hockey. And he, he doesn't really change how he does things. He keeps it pretty simple, and they play hard, and love to play down low, love to muck it up, love to get pucks in behind D. Um, that's just Duluth, this Duluth hockey. So we got to be ready to go to war and win our battles and, and, and beat them at their own game. We know what we know. they have really good players, but how they're going to play, we, we know how they're going to play. And I think for, for most coaches in college hockey, the opening weekend is – Really preparation-wise, focusing on you, focusing on your team, what you want to do well, establishing your identity uh, at a very, very early stage. If we can establish our identity you know, off the hop Saturday, I like our chances. We, we, we are very deep, especially up front. We're going to be a handful for anybody. Um, I think we've shored up our goaltending, and I'm excited to see our guys on the ice Saturday. And then, just just I know this is logistics. I really do care because I'm a Northern Minnesota kid. So you're going (laughs) from you are. I know. Have you heard that on the show before? No, (laughs) talk about Minnesota. No idea. I've never brought that up before. So you go from Duluth to Bemidji. Do you come home first, or do you stay out? Okay, so you're staying out there. Yeah. So if they want to stop by my mom's, I'll give her a call. (laughs) Here we go. We should get some Minnesota theme music. I'll call my buddy Pete. We'll get some Dave's Pizza over to the ice. You'll get him some the Green Mill. Any? Do you stay in Duluth if you? Days, you're going to Bemidji. We're going to go Saturday, Sunday in Duluth, and then Monday go right to Bemidji. Oh, so, buddy, and, and we'll stay, have to talk stay offline. Stay there for the week. And, oh, and roll with the Rex. Come on. Well, I know it's right the, at where the they playing. That Petey's dad built. The That's Robert right. H. Peters yeah. Arena. Yeah. And the hotel there is right next to the rink, which is yeah. great when you're playing there in January and February. October, beautiful time of year. I'm je- legit jealous right now. So yeah. you're going into another team. So you go from Duluth. And Bemidji, I, I don't think they're as nationally ranked, and they're not high up. They Minnesota, Duluth, and, and but they're also they're a good team, and they have, oh, yeah. a, they have a program that's been around a long time. And one of the things I find interesting is you stole one of their players. So <laughs> <laughs> one of their best players went and entered the portal last year, Sillinger, and he's joined your club, and he's he's looking great right now yeah. for you. So does that play into anything you do when you go into a building like that for Sillinger? Do you, do you get him hyped up? Do you say, hey, take it easy today? Or or how does that affect how you coach a team going to Bemidji State? I think I think it's going to mainly just, you know, it's, it's rallying behind Lucas. I mean, I would imagine the guys on Bemidji are probably going to give him a hard time, you know, and the fans are probably going to boo him. He did a really good job up yeah. there. It was a 40-point kid um, and a big loss for them. You know, uh, there's no sugarcoating that. So, it's rallying behind him and making sure that we go into his old building and, and support him and, and help him get a couple wins. I know they're going to be really important games to him. Um, before we move on, again, we're so excited to be here at Four Peaks drinking on our show. This is oh, what we do, yeah. by the <laughs> way. That we don't even need to be here to be it. to drink Four Peaks. But cheers again. Again, if you're uh, around, if you're able to stop by Four Peaks at any time today, come down and join us. Let them know you're with PHNX. Get $3 pints of WOW and kilt lifter you must be 21 and older to drink and enjoy responsibly but there's plenty of amazing food here if you want to enjoy that as well we're going to be out here the rest of the day and coach powers is going to be on the sun devil show after us so if you can't get out here right now you can still catch coach powers there at the end and again before we move on to questioning more question questioning that sounds so intense <laughs> i know to, to, to this questioning i know it's, less formal, <laughs> it's, it's very it's very informal um I'm going to check out Underdog Fantasy for, what, what day is it? Wednesday for tomorrow's Thursday night football game. It just makes it so much more fun to watch football, to, to be invested. Um, the pick em game is so easy. Pick higher or lower. You can win tons of money. Or you can do weenie bets like me. Not bets, but weenie <laughs> deposits like weenie me and, and see how much money you can win. It's great practice. We're going to dive into it more when hockey season is here. Download the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or click on the link in the show notes. Sign up with the promo code PHNX and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code PHNX, and get in on the action today. Coach Powers, I'm curious. How do you feel about joining a conference versus staying independent? I know, you know there's been a lot of talk about whether or not ASU would join a conference. How do you see that situation? It's really the only remaining question mark that we have right and, and the one that, that, that people can ask and, and kind of throw out there but right now we are very content with staying independent um 24 home games this year next year you, we could have 29 wow like 29 wow. out of you know 36 games wow. at home um and we, we we put in so much sweat equity for seven years traveling more than anybody mm. and so many teams owe us trips back that could last three or four years so um 
you know, record amount of home games this year, more next year. Uh, we're not going to give that up to join a league. It's, 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 it's too valuable revenue-wise, um, and we think we're going to have a great home ice advantage and, and win a lot of games here. So, um, you know, no rush. You know, obviously getting that chance at a second life in an auto bid is, yeah. is something that draws us to playing in a conference and, and is the, it gives you the upside, which we didn't get last year. Um, but uh, we got we got to make the most of our, our regular season in every game to make sure we get in. But that that reminds me, and, and we talk about this. We've talked about this offline before. This is the Notre Dame uh, of college football. Yeah. You, that if you're good, it's great. Yeah. Um, but it also you get that automatic bid if you're in a and if you're in a conference, you get that you know you get the playoff win regular season when you're automatically in the yeah. NCAA tournament. But this the way you're going about it now, you are able to play BU, BC, Minnesota, Denver. You're able to play those top schools year after year. And if you're if you can beat them, you're in. Yeah, we're I, a school that can get away with it, right? We we can we can live as an independent and succeed yep. as an independent. There's schools that are joining college hockey, the Lindenwoods, the Stone Hills, sure. the LIUs. They're not going to be able to survive forever as an independent because they won't get home games. Teams want to come here. They yes. want to come to Arizona. Really? They want to play. Well, really? well, and then the more, yeah. the more teams that come, it makes you think that players are going to start looking around saying, hey. Thank you. That's got to be a key piece. Yeah, for the portal. I don't want to get you in any trouble here. But for the portal, for sure. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's not a lot. I mean, it, teams are going to walk into this place and, and have a great experience. And, and sure, that could absolutely happen. Um, you know, I'll let you guys speculate on that. Yeah. More than you know. <laughs> no, but yeah. he's right. I brought yes. it up. I've I been to Bemidji. I've been to Bemidji in January, and, yeah. and I've talked to the head coach of the Bemidji State Beavers, and they are completely aware of what this program can become because of the facilities, their uh-huh. program, and, and the weather. I mean, it makes <laughs> a big difference for them, and they understand losing a cylinder was tough for them, but they completely understand that is going to be part of what they have to do to recruit. For you, it's... I, it's get off the plane and go here. Here yeah. you go. We have a yeah. special oh. delivery. Oh, oh look, it just keeps coming port- now. But pumpkin porter cheesecake. Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin porter. <laughs> get the pumpkin porter cheesecake. Special delivery. Thank you. Thank I don't care if you're a cheesecake guy oh if you're in training. God. Absolutely. That's I'm, for you. I'm, I go into training next when I get back. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> not today. The yeah, pumpkin porter today. cheesecake yeah. here is yeah, so You're not having one, Craig? Unbelievable. Well, I guess I am now. There's a four slice. Well, yeah, there's always an I was going to be magnanimous. Sean DePaz has one behind. Yeah. Like, I take care of everybody. Wow. Wow, thanks and again, just, Four Peaks. I mean, just to play on that a little bit more. You can walk in, you can go golfing here after yeah. you, you can walk into the rink. Like you, you walk into the rink and see how amazing it is, and you walk out in your T-shirt and flip-flops yeah. because you're but, in Arizona. I mean, but also, Craig, everybody in the NHL talks about this as well, that ASU is going to have a recruiting advantage over every D1 program simply because of the location. But there's two things, and, and location is one thing, and I completely agree with that. Facilities is another, and that's important. But most importantly, you have to be good. Like, yeah. if you if you have a great building and great weather and you're not a good hockey program or a good hockey club in your last year, it doesn't help. No. So I think that's important, too, that, yeah. that you've shown success in this building and, or in this city, and, and you can build on that success in the new building. Yeah, we, we really believe we're, we're, we haven't even scratched the surface with our program. I mean, what we were able to do at Oceanside was, I think, as good as you can out of a facility like that. Um, you know, eight out of 10 kids, when you come in and you show them that place, and if you want to recruit kids that want to play in the National Hockey League, <laughs> they're not going to look at Oceanside and say, yeah, I can develop right. there, right? So the weather, the campus, all the, the perks really haven't come into too much of, a, of an advantage. Now it will, right? I, I mean, the facility that we have to develop kids, the resources now at Mullet, um, it, it's, it's, it's going to be really, really cool. All right, I want to ask you, I don't want to dive too deep into this because I know the PHNX Sun Devils guys are going to get more uh, granular with you on the team itself. But uh, one of your key points of emphasis this offseason, as you mentioned earlier, was to shore up the goaltending and defend better. Yeah. Uh, we know about the additions of TJ Semtefield. Do you have a nickname for him, by the way? So they want to. Semp. Semp. We'll just Semp. go we with Semp. Okay, That's so easier. we don't have to pronounce his name. Glad, I'm glad you didn't make me have to try it. <laughs> yeah, like Mastro. You, yeah, that Mastro was Simone. Mastro. But now Mastro. I can do yeah, it. Mastro Simone, got it. But I couldn't do it when he was on our show. Yeah, of course. And Gibson Homer. Um, what steps did you take beyond that to improve your overall team defense? You got the, the personnel yeah. in, but what did you look at on, on defense? The way you defend. You know, just just really protecting the dangerous area better than we did. You know, and, and, and it's just it, it, defending is, is, a, is a mindset, you know, and – um, and it's just it's just a, it's a mindset of, of competing and, and will and and essentially the, the the company line really for the last month is if we score we might win we scored a lot last year if yeah. they don't, if we don't let them score we can't lose right so right. 
we have to take care of our end first, and, and we're going to have all the talent and skill in the world to get up and down the ice and, and put pucks in the net even more than we did last year, and we could score really, really effectively last year. So it's, it's a mindset, you know, and, and if you're not going to defend for us, you're not going to play. That's pretty much the message. Nobody could have predicted COVID, obviously, when it hit. Yeah. You lost a lot of momentum in this program when oh, it yeah. hit. You guys were headed to your second straight NCAA tournament. The season gets kiboshed. Mm-hmm. The next season, I wrote about this, you had to play the entire season on the road in the Big yeah. Ten, which is insane. Basically lived on the road. And then just a bit of a frustrating season last year, 500 season, yep. for, for the reasons we just talked about. With the building, with the additions, with, with everything that's going on with this program, do you feel like you now have the opportunity to get right back on track right where you were before COVID hit? Yeah, we do. We feel like we can do more than we've ever done. You know, I mean, COVID did set us back. Everyone can say that, but when you have to go on a road for an entire season, <laughs> yeah, um, it, it, it's just, it was our only way to get the, the kids on the ice, you know. And then you tack on the fact that we lose Brinson Passion up to an NHL contract. We, yeah. we had Josh Maniscalco coming back to be our captain. He didn't know if we were going to have a season, so he signed us to Pittsburgh. So you lose two guys in the back end prematurely to NHL contracts as a fifth year going in your it, it was just too much to stomach and, and it set us back and, and um, we feel like just now where we've recovered last year we kind of had to teach our guys our young guys and program how to win again what it takes to win in, on a nightly basis in college hockey and um, you know we, 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 we learned a lot through last year and we learned a lot from our mistakes and what we didn't do and what we need to do to have success and um, you know I guess We'll find out if it's worked on Saturday. <laughs> Looking at your upcoming schedule, not just in the short term, but just your schedule as a whole this season, what do you look at and think as is the formula for success to have a winning season this season with this schedule? We take care of home ice. Obviously, with 24 home games, we, we want to be just as successful, if not more, than we were at Oceanside. And if we can do that, we're going to win a lot of games. Um, and, uh, you know, essentially, you know, we, we go to, you know, Duluth, Bemidji, uh, Clarkson, New Hampshire, Denver, and we're at North Dakota for, for one, or at in Vegas against North Dakota for one. You split those and you take care of home ice, you're probably getting in as a two seed. Wow. You know, so, um, you know, that, that's that's what we're looking to do is, is really take care of home ice and, and go and get splits on the road and, and we'll get back in. We're going to talk one more hockey question. Um, a friend of the program here, Josh Doan, We've seen him develop as from a little kid here in this community, yeah. and now he's clearly a man. He's become your captain. What are the next steps in his progression and his development to get him not only successful here, but to push him along to the next level? Yeah, I think Josh has progressed. And it's incredible how much he's progressed. He, he, he came in a boy. Now he's absolutely a young man. His body's completely transformed, and we're continuing to help you know help him you know get bigger and stronger and. Um, and, and you can see, you know, he's really rounded his game. He's, he's a, absolutely a 200-foot guy now, you know, and he was never bad defensively. He was always good defensively. But now, you know, if he loses a, a puck battle or, or, or a stick battle, it's, it's a shock. He's so heavy on his stick and so strong. Um, and he's going to be used in every situation. He's going to kill penalties this year. He didn't do that last year. Um, he's playing on even a more talented line this year than he was last year with Mastro and Silly. Um, so I think he's going to take another step in, in every way. And, and he's the kind of kid that if you give him that responsibility of wearing the C, he's going to take accountability and, and, and use that to drive him even more. And, and he's done that so far. He's been an unbelievable captain in every way. And, uh, it, it, you know, he is to say he's chopping at the bit to get on the ice Saturday would be an understatement. He's really excited for the season. I know a lot of uh, hockey fans in the Valley, Coyotes fans, ASU fans, a lot of them, it's an overlap, are really excited to get into Mullet Arena and see it. And I'm looking right now, I literally have it pulled up in front of me. There's tickets, very affordable tickets available on game time in the 40s, which is you know way cheaper than you're going to go to a Coyotes game at all. I know a lot of our listeners are really excited to go to Arizona State games this year. So I implore everybody, check out the game time app because it's got the cheapest tickets that you're going to find are on game time you can save up to 60 percent on tickets when you buy them last minute so if you're you know indecisive and on the day of the game there'll be tickets on there great for the procrastinators out there and the best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in our description so scroll on down click our link when you buy your tickets on game time and if you want to get all decked out in asu gear if you're not you know stocked up on your asu gear check out foco i have have that pulled up right now too and there's like 
super fun hats and shirts and everything on here. Um, so for Arizona State, so you can get up to date on your ASU gear on FOCO. Um, they got you covered with the best Arizona merchandise, officially licensed gear for men, women, and kids, and everything from bobbleheads to swimsuits to Crocs. Crocs are back, by the way. This week, <laughs> they have a brand new Cardinals hoodies for the Cardinals fans out there. It's the ultimate loungewear, similar to a Snuggie. Head on over to foco.com, and for all non-presale items, use the promo code PHNX for 10% off. All right, we're going to dive into some fun segments here. We do a sh- show, a se- I guess it's a whole segment. show. It's a, it's a show? It's been a it's whole, a show. it's a segment that turns into a whole show. When Craig can't show up, usually. <laughs> no, it's just fun. Um, <laughs> Tales from the road, because we all have crazy stories from road trips, um, either on the road with hockey or just in general. So, you know, crazy, just crazy travel stories. So I want to know from you, do you have any crazy or fun or funny tales from the road for you? The um, ASU edition. Yeah, ASU edition. Sun Devil edition. Yeah, I mean, you know. We, Especially uh, after a year on the road. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, the, co- the COVID year, there's a lot of tales from the road. I mean, just from, from you know, not being able to have team meals, not being able to, to have team meetings and film sessions, doing everything over Zoom in the same hotel. It was a really unique experience. Um, the staff got really good at Euchre, really good at Euchre. <laughs> and, uh, myself and Hixie were a team against, uh, coach field and, uh, Riley Simpson was our graduate assistant that year. And, uh, we just wiped the floor with them all the time. I never played <laughs> Euchre. I'm not a card guy, but I actually was so bored that they taught me Euchre and we played it literally every night. <laughs> so, um, and it got heated. Like it, I mean, Euchre is a game. If you play it, like you can get really heated against <laughs> yeah. who you're playing against and, there were moments where I thought Field and Hicks were going to kill each other. Um, so, you know, that that's the PG version of, of ASU staff, Euchre. Um, but, uh, yeah, there, there is a lot of really good stories from that year. Really just great memories. I and mean, when you spend that much time on the road with your staff and your players, you become really close. And um, I think the best memory from that all-road season was after all the – the trials and tribulation, playing at Minnesota with 11 healthy skaters wow. and getting thumped. Um, and then we go to Ohio State to end the year and we win 5 1. You know, and, and the guys were just, I mean, they could barely get to the room after the game. They were so tired, but we weren't losing that last game. We wanted to win it, it ended on a high note, and we did. And that was a, a really good memory. Do you still take any recruiting trips or are you leaving that to other people now? I do. Yeah, I, just, I was just in Pittsburgh this past okay. weekend for the USHL Fall Classic. So I, I really embrace being an active head coach in the recruiting process. I think that there's. Half of college hockey probably has head coaches that are, and the other half, they don't really recruit. You yeah. know, they just basically sit on campus and, and wait for kids to come to them. But I like to get out. I like to get out in the rinks and talk to people and talk to advisors and talk to coaches and see kids with my own eyes. And we try to evaluate all three of us when there's a kid that we know we want to bring in. We try to get all of our eyes on them um, so, so we can agree, yeah, this is a kid that we want. Do you still – do recruiting with Alex Hicks, and if so, do you let him drive anymore? <laughs> no, he doesn't drive. He was in Pittsburgh with me. He didn't drive once the whole time. Um, he, is, he is literally the worst driver on the planet. Like just, it's, it's texting while he's driving. Or it's, it's, te- oh it's unbelievable. No. Like it's, it's, it's scary. Absolutely scary. We, we, yeah, I told Craig this story. The very first road trip or recruiting trip that we took as a program, before we ever played a game, we're still a club team. I hired Hicksy on. We go up to BC. We're driving from Merritt to Vancouver, and if you've ever done that drive, it's it's not safe. It's like right. you're like skiing down a mountain. <laughs> and uh, and Hicksy was just checking his phone, and we're skidding, and he's like, "Oh, relax." And I'm just, I literally Jeez. thought we were gonna. My die. heart rate like, like just went up yeah. listening yeah. to that story. And so ever since then, uh, yeah, he's not allowed to drive. <laughs> all right, we're we're sitting in a bar, obviously, and we're drinking beer. First of all. What's your Four Peaks beer choice? You told me you're like a lighter beer guy, and we're not allowing you enough time to drink your beer because you're talking the whole time. That's that's our secret here. I, I am a lighter beer guy. I, in full full disclosure, you know this is great beer, but I'm not a beer guy. I'm a tequila guy. Yes. Oh, um, thank, thank you for the segue. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I like it. And I like any light beer. And sometimes you got to have a beer, and, and it's a good change of pace. But 
he put a tequila in front of me, and, and I'm going to drink it. <laughs> what? Let's let's dive into this a little bit. Like, uh, how how deep do you get in the tequila love? Do you know a lot about tequila? Oh yeah, really deep. Yeah, it's <laughs> I, it's I don't drink the the you know the Corvo or the the the, the well stuff. It's I'm a tequila snob, <laughs> right? So um, the the really good high end stuff in Yeho and Reposado, and you know the the, the Reposados aged. The añejo is aged in, in whiskey barrels, so that's the darker it gets, the more it's aged, and the sweeter it gets. Wow! Um, yeah, that's the same thing Sean DePaz was telling me before yeah. the show about tequila. Yeah, if you no. if you put really good tequila on ice, and then the, the other secret to tequila is lemon or orange, not lime. You put le- I put lemon in my tequila, so squeeze a lemon wedge in it, drop it in, it smooths it out, it makes it so good. You sip it. <laughs> And it gives you a great buzz. I didn't really know. good high in tequila. You, you never good get a Good tequila. Ever. You can drink it like straight Grant up. Grant Powers oh, yeah. is dropping knowledge on yeah. our show right now. We're going to have to do another Wednesday show from Port Beaks where we just drink tequila. Yeah. Who yeah, knows no. where it'll go from there. Yeah, but no. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> if we have a whole cheese steak, cheesecake, <laughs> cheesecake, we can yeah. you know, balance out the with <laughs> yeah. tequila. Oh, oh. Yeah. Give me the Uber are, first. are there foods that actually pair with tequila now as long as we're going down this road? No. Yeah, none. Can I ask my last hockey question? Yeah, go yes. ahead. So to, to sum it up, the, the hockey stuff, new building, some new players, new captain. What are the expectations for the issue, Sun Devils, for you? Like, where is the bar set for this season? You know, it's the NCAA tournament. You know, if, if we don't make it, just like last year, it was a disappointment. We wanted to be in. We thought we had a team to get in. We didn't get in. It didn't go our way for a variety of reasons, mainly because we couldn't keep the puck out of our net. And that's a team issue. It's not just a positional issue. Um, but we, we do believe that we showed that up, and we have more firepower than we did. So, um, yeah, I mean, you ask anybody in our program, if we're not in a tournament at the end of the year, we, we believe this year was not a success. I wanted to ask one up follow-up question. I've never asked you this before. When did you adjust to the reality I was a club coach. Now I'm a Division One college hockey coach at a Power Five conference school. Yeah, I mean, in the early stages, you know, it was it was really a struggle because all we did was win at that level. Like we were 169 and 23, I think, in my wow. five years as a head coach. So we, we we won. You know, if you played us, you lost, right? And yeah. so you know, I was really fortunate to have players that that I trusted and that they trusted me in those early stages and. I probably tried to change a little bit of who I was and how I coached and how we did things when we made that jump. And I'll never forget Jordan Young and Liam Norris about three-fourths of the way into the year were guys that I won a national championship with at the club level. They asked to come meet with me privately, and they said, what are you doing? Like, you, like don't change anything. Like, like we, we were successful. We got here because of the way we did things and how you were with the players and how you interacted. And, and so ever since that day, I, I, I you can evolve, right? But... The core values and what you believe in and what you're good at, I think you got to be true to yourself. And and so I, I really just am the same coach today as I was then. That, um, that really you know, underscores your openness, too. The, the fact that your leadership group can come to you and say, hey, what yeah. are you doing? This isn't you. Yeah, well, you, you can't fool players, right? Like, and that's the biggest thing I think coaches, you know, that fail, um, they think they can fool. You can't fool players. You can't fool kids. You know, if you're not genuine, then they're going to they're gonna sense it. They're going to call it out all day and and it's never going to work, and you're never going to be successful. Mm. Wow. It's crazy to think how far everything's come. We toured Mullet and saw where your office is going to be. Yeah. Well, that's some, bougie, that's by the way. Digs. Bougie. That's some yeah. You need yeah. a map yeah. to get around that office. Yeah. 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 My it, wife's honestly afraid I'm never going to come home. It's beautiful. <laughs> She's probably right. It is but. beautiful. There. Oh, my well, God. Well, two of the three of us will be there on opening night. Yeah. yeah. Craig is we'll not be coming. There. Craig's He'll be on the road with He's the Coyotes. Oh, okay. Lee and yeah. I will be there. We'll be Fair there. Enough. The Can't Sun wait. Devils crew is going to be there. We'll take you care Yeah, of we're guys. really excited to be there. For yeah, we'll have an army there. Yeah. yeah. Good. We're bringing a whole bunch yeah. of people. Yeah, Good. if you need uh, if you need some furniture for the new office, by the way. How about that? For Good segue. Uh, check yeah. out more furniture. They have a fall sale. They furnish our entire new studio. Amazing, amazing furniture. So if you're still looking to furnish your new office um, or your home, check out morefurniture.com for their fall sale. We can't thank you enough for joining us. Thanks for having um, me. Everybody, if you're watching this live on YouTube now, stay tuned because at 1 o'clock, Coach Powers will be joining the PHNX Sun Devils crew. I know they're going to, they're always, 
They're a hoot. Yeah, That's all I got to say. <laughs> it's going to be a different accurate? vibe on that. Little little different by the way, this is why Greg Powers is nursing his beer right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to be a tequila vibe. Yeah, yeah it, it is. It's 100% right. it tequila is. vibe. Big, all right. yeah, 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 if we're the beer, they're they the, are the tequila. tequila. That is 100%. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. That's that's fair. That's I think that's a good Actually, don't tell Shane. Shane's going to heal. That will be the start of the show. I mean, Shane loves the tequila soda. Yeah, he really does. Um, but seriously, we can't thank you enough. It's crazy. Uh, you were our first in-studio guest ever oh, wow. for PHNX. And now you're here in our, you know, once a month studio that we love very much. Yes, so really. I feel it now. Next step, you'll have to come to our brand new studio. Absolutely. Downtown. Yeah, I look forward really cool. to it. Yeah. Um, and close to Tempe. Not too far. Not too far. No, no not too far easy. at all. You just yeah. easy to reach hop, down, hop down the road. Um, we've got a, a fun week ahead. I'll let, I'll let Craig take this. Yeah, I've got the ASU season preview coming up on Friday. And on GoPHNX.com. On GoPHNX. That's why you need That's to say this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because I always blow the brand. I'm like, Craig, yeah. you do this. Never mind. Yeah, You're not doing mind. it the way I want. You're incorrect. <laughs> I'll have a deeper dive on a topic that I know will interest ASU hockey fans. Um, and then, of course, we've got some content coming on the other team that I cover. I'll, I'll be in Pittsburgh that opening night. Probably looking at your game instead, wishing I was at a yeah. Mullet Arena instead of Let's watching be optimistic. Sidney yeah. Crosby walk through the Coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, lots of great content coming up. We're going we're to do a show with uh, CHGO on Friday. Friday. Yeah, a crossover show. Head to head crossover with Chicago, the topic, Phoenix. Whose situation sucks more, the Blackhawks or the Coyotes? Yep. So, yeah. lots of fun Tune content in. coming, but thank you once again. Thanks, Thanks for having me here. Yeah. Yeah. Really, fun. really looking so forward fun. to this season because. It's finally here. I'm the so arena's I'm here. Everything's in place for you guys, finally. Yeah, it really is. We're looking forward to it, too. Being on that ice last night uh, was really special, but seeing our players on the ice when we get back is going to be even more special, so it's going to be cool. I'm so I'm so excited, and I'm saying this as a Wildcat. Myself. Like, I, I'm a Wildcat. I'm so bought into ASU yeah, hockey. So I'm so much. excited. Um, check out the PHNX Locker, by the way. You can grab some Sun Devil merchandise there. You have two weeks till home opener, so you can stock up on your gear for then. Again, Coach Powers, thank you so much. Everybody stay tuned for 1 o'clock on the PHNX Sun Devil Show on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so you never miss a show. Follow PHNX Sports across all social platforms. PHNX Coyotes on Twitter. PHNX underscore Coyotes on Twitter. That is. I think we should do a toast one last time one to, last to, to last Ocean. Toast. To, 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 to R.I.P. Yeah. Oceanside. R.I.P. Oceanside. Thanks for the memories. Hello, Mullet Arena. Hello, Mullet. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you soon.